Hey, hey everybody, this is Tyler here for Mehap to Fab Designs. I am a owner and artist here and a content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Today I'm gonna to be applying a transfer. This is from the new Bells and Whistles line from Dixie Bell that they have recently come out with. Um, it's kind of a one-stop shop for you. Um, so you not only have paint and all the products you need for that, but now they also have stencils um, and transfers and decoupage paper. So this is one of their new um, transfers. It is lace. It's a really pretty um, light gray color. And I have got this buffet that you see here behind me that I'm working on. And so we are gonna be putting this transfer on the back of these doors because we've got this beautiful piece um, that I've just done. Um, that has this really um, cool textured Scandinavian type finish. Um, and, you know, if I just left it with the cherry um, interior, it would just kind of look unfinished to me. So I did decide to go ahead and complete that. So we've got a coat of silk paint, which is the new all-in-one paint that Dixie Belle offers in a color called Black Sands. And it's kind of a dark charcoal gray. And I chose that because I have some grays in the piece and I wanted to pull from that. Um, and then the door is painted in a custom blend of rusty nail and drop cloth. Um, and I've got um, about six or seven colors, I think, on this piece total. But that's what I went with for the top and the interior. And then we're gonna be putting the lace transfer on the inside of the door. So this transfer comes with four pieces um, and they look like this. And you just kind of add them and line them up and they are numbered here so you can keep up with the order if you're going in sequence that way your design matches up like that was number four this is number two and we're going to be applying it just like this they come with a little rubbing stick that you see here that we'll use to rub the design off of the paper backing onto our piece so let's get started so you'll want to line these up first to see um how your transfer is gonna lay. This is wider than what I need it to be and it's also just a little bit shorter. I have a little bit of an overlap where I run out of my transfer here at the top and bottom. So I'm not really gonna worry about that because I'll just kind of um, sponge some paint around it to help kind of blend it in a little bit. But you do wanna kind of center it so that you have the same amount of space on the top and bottom, if that makes sense. So once you figure out where your layout's gonna be, you can pre-cut this if you want. Um, so that you don't have any extra um, transfer that's gonna overhang because once you peel the back off it's gonna stick to whatever it's touching so if you leave this extra on and you peel your backing off and it wraps around and touches or say it went around this way it is gonna stick to the to the piece of the furniture here where I don't want it to um, so you either have to be real careful when you're peeling it off and just try to avoid that or you can pre cut it to the size you need. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Um, and I think I'm going to grab some scissors and cut it. So I'm just going to hold this up here and then um, I'm just going to cut it from one side of the door here. Or at least I guess get it started. And just kind of get rid of that excess there. So these come with, um, it's really like three layers. You have your paper backing, you have your top clear part, and then you have the image itself, which is printed onto the clear part. So once you get ready to lay it down, you peel your backing off, and then you place it where you want, and then you rub the image to get your image to let loose of the clear top piece here and stay onto your um, whatever it is that you're working on. I'm just, you can either pull the whole thing off at one time when you're doing these, or you can kind of peel back part of it like I'm doing here, just until you get it lined up and ready. And I think that's about where I had it at. And if you're worried about it moving um, while you're working on it, Place, just to kind of help hold it. 
Begin using your rubbing stick to rub over the transfer. By doing this, it will help loosen the design from the clear paper and help it adhere to the piece of furniture. It takes a little getting used to and a lot of elbow grease as you'll have to rub until your biceps and triceps are burning. I have found that if you're peeling the clear paper back as you're pressing with your rubbing stick, it will come off much easier. Okay, so for this, I wanted to show you, since I am placing this bottom piece up here on the top and I need to be able to see this so I can line it up because the designs go together um, in sequence. So because of that, instead of peeling it off um, horizontally and running it across this way, I'm gonna peel it from the top down like that. That way I can line this up because it is clear, you can see through it but that way you can line it up and see the piece behind it, like that. Carefully line the second piece of your transfer up with the first piece that you just applied, making sure that the design lines up and doesn't have any discrepancies. I may or may not have some in mind. In my defense, I will say that it would be much easier if this door would stop swinging every time I let loose of it as having a stable piece of furniture that's not moving would be much easier for applying a transfer. The good news is you can always come back and distress over this or add antiquing wax or glaze um, to help kind of age the piece overall. And usually these small discrepancies aren't even noticeable. Oh, if only we could actually work this fast. Um, also, am I the only one that finds watching these crazy fast time-lapse videos to be somewhat soothing somehow? No, soothing isn't the correct word. It's satisfying. That's what it is, satisfying. Bear with me, we're almost done. So I'm gonna take um, a 400 grit sandpaper and a sanding block here and just kind of run it along the edges here just to kind of get off those loose pieces of transfer from that little bit of an overlap. So because I had this little bit of overlap here at the top of this piece and also at the bottom where I ran out of transfer design, I'm going to help blend that in by using my two paint colors, Drop Cloth and Rusty Nail. I'm going to pour a little bit of each of these out onto a plate and then I'm just going to kind of mix them together and dab them around the edges of this door. That way it'll kind of cover up my empty space there and help blend it in with the piece. So I'm actually just going to use a shop towel and I'm going to kind of mix those two colors together and I'm going to use the shop towel kind of like you would use a sponge and I'm just going to dab and apply that paint to create a little bit of texture and hide again that empty space. And the color you choose can be varied. You can use a lighter color. You can try to match it perfectly with the color that's on the store. Um, you can do it darker, or you can kind of do a combination of all of those things just to help it kind of blend in, which is what I ended up doing.
continue doing this around the whole frame of the transfer we applied. I'm not only doing it on the top and bottom where the empty space is, but I do decide to go ahead and do it down the sides as well. That way it's uniform. One side down, one to go. Continue with the same process over here as you did the first door. Use tape to apply and hold your transfer into place. Again, preferably use a piece that is stationary that's not moving every time you let loose. This would be a whole lot easier on me as I could put my hand on the clear plastic portion of the transfer and peel it back as I'm rubbing it. As I said, it is much easier to get the transfer to release if you're able to do that. So peeling it back as you're rubbing it, it will come off easily and quickly if you do it this way. Again, using a sponge or a cloth, you can dab your paint here around your edges to kind of soften it and hide the empty space. And that's pretty much it. Um, we're done for now. I'm going to let it dry, see if I like it this way, or it may come back and distress it a little bit. Here's what it looked like when I finished with it for the day. Um, it was still a little bit wet and shiny, but that's the completed look at this point. As always, thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys. You can find us on social media at the following sites. There is a complete start to finish tutorial on this finish on my website available for purchase. Or you can sign up for a creative membership group on Facebook. And be sure and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.